Harry, I wanted to uh, try something that we haven't done before. I brought in some coins here and I wanted to pretend like I'm gonna sell them to you just to kind of see what your prices would be and sort of how the uh, process would go. Here we go. Hey, Harry, I brought some coins in here to sell today. All right, let's have a look. Did you know SD Bullion is giving away a monster box of 2023 Silver Eagles? Sign up today at sdbullion.com slash sweepstakes. All right, good morning. Good morning. What's up? Good, good to see you. Harry. Silver Dragons, welcome back. Adrian, good to, see you. good to see you. Great to be back at Harry's Coin Shop. And uh, wow, look at this. Got a lot of stuff in stock. We got Silver Eagles. They even got some of the new... Uh, Britannia's, you were telling me these just came in, right? The yes. With the king on them? The first ones we've seen. Was it someone that was selling them to you, or did you get them from a wholesaler? No, from a wholesaler, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the queen has been on coins for what? 80 years or something? 1952. <laughs> really? Since 52. Wow, so I guess 70 years yeah. plus. That's insane. Well, it's kind of nice to see a new face, but I don't know, I feel like uh, maybe they did him dirty with that portrait. Yeah, let's get a good look at him. Yeah, let's take a look. What do you think? What do you think about that portrait there? <laughs> well, I prefer the queen. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. I wonder how long he's going to be on the coins for, though, you know? Well, he's not a young man, but he comes from long-lived people, so who knows? Who knows? Yeah. His mom and dad both made it into their 90s. Are those selling for the same price as the ones with the queen on them? It doesn't matter? Absolutely the same, yes. Because people were saying, like, oh, the stuff with the queen on it now that she's dead probably gonna sell for more money, but that's not really the case with bullion, right? I mean, think about it. No one's been on more coins in history than the queen, so they're never gonna be rare. So there may, be, may have been a little premium when she passed away because of nostalgia, but frankly, no, there hasn't been anything. Yeah, I heard that she was on over a billion coins oh, worldwide. Easily. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's over 35 countries, so. She's the maybe the most prolific face on a coin in the world ever maybe no there's no maybe about it she has been on more coins than anyone in history that's insane yeah. well so we got a lot of uh bullion here we got some gold looks like uh we got some of the 20 francs back here those are a popular bullion piece you can get them from switzerland which is where these are from also belgium and of course france yeah i like the uh swiss miss as they say on uh on these ones here uh, but my favorite is the uh france uh because uh, the rooster is just so cool and the angel and the angel yeah. and then those were also minted um at the paris mint i believe yeah. which that mint has been around for a very long time centuries yeah so it's just kind of cool to you know hold a piece of history in your hand so would you say because people always ask me about the 20 francs are these good for stacking like is the premium relatively reasonable for this size of gold here they are these are probably 30 some dollars over the melt value so if if particularly if you can't afford a full ounce this isn't a bad way to go really relatively low premium compared to fractional say uh, eagles so these are just under a fifth of an ounce. Correct, 0.1867 troy ounce. But the premium on this, even though it's smaller than a quarter ounce, is likely gonna be lower than a quarter ounce gold? It will be. The negative for some stackers is that the arithmetic, frankly, is not an even number like a tenth or a quarter ounce. You know, it's a, it's a, an odd fraction. Yeah. So it's not for everybody. Understand too that they were never trying to be even numbers, like a, a quarter ounce or anything like that, because they were, the value of these for circulation was pegged to the price of world price of gold. And so for many years, this was currency. And as such, not trying to be a round number by any stretch. Any, any more than we were trying to be a round number with our gold pieces here. The $20, as an example, is 0.96 uh, troy ounce, not a troy ounce, close to it. But again, pegged to the price of gold had nothing to do with stacking or um, trying to make it an easy arithmetic. Yeah, and, and so I know these are 90% and these are 90% as well? Yes. Okay, if you can bring them to a coin shop in your area or sell them online even, I don't see why you wouldn't stack something with that much lower of a premium right now. Especially if people come in and say, do you have anything fractional, you know, something less than an ounce. Right. And so this is 
an example of what we could offer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, if they can't afford to buy a whole ounce, get something like that. And it's nice to have these two because 10th ounce and quarter ounce bullion pieces have been back ordered for a while and very, very hard to find right now. Really? Yes, very hard to find. So right now the gold price is under $2,000 an ounce. Have you seen an uptick in people wanting to buy gold because it's dropped slightly or not really? I mean, not really. Um, I mean, it's still very high and the demand has been pretty steady. Really? Even when it was at uh, 2020 a few days ago, we still got sold out. Lately, it hasn't seemed to matter. It doesn't matter what the price is doing? I mean, it's somewhat inelastic. Yeah. You know? I'm sure there's a point which maybe people will stop buying, but I don't know where that is. Yeah. Well, I mean, people were buying gold when it was $200 an ounce. Now it's 2000 They're still sure. buying it. Sure. So I wonder, if, yeah, if it keeps going up, if actually more people will start to pile on. This is something we touched in one of the other videos, but kind of the, yeah. the FOMO, the fear of missing out, all yes. the new people rushing in. seems like the higher the price goes, the more new people will start buying. Without question, we've met a lot of new people who've never stacked before, come in with a lot of questions and then, then buy. So you'd say the amount of new people is increasing? For sure. And you guys get phone calls too, right? It's a lot of new stackers. Yeah, and really thanks in part, in large part to your videos because we've had people, not just local people who have found us, but people from all over the country. We've had calls far, as far away as the American Virgin Islands. Oh, wow. Yeah. Although the, the furthest email so far is New Zealand. Oh, my goodness. So all around the world. People. All around. Oh, yeah. Wow. All around the world. That's very cool. Been, we had some shipments to Canada, and <laughs> it's just been, it's yeah. been nice. Speaking of uh, all around the world, I know there are some people who watch my videos and who are into coins that maybe they don't speak English. Uh, maybe they speak Spanish. Uh, Adrian, you actually speak Spanish, right? Yes, sir, yeah. Hablamos español. So if people want to know about what coins to buy and stuff, you'd be happy to... Oh, yes, always, yeah. And um, you know, I can help with any questions you may have. Um, hablo español, podemos venderle plata, oro, cualquier pregunta que tengan, yo les puedo ayudar. There you go. So, I mean, I didn't understand very much of that, but... You have quite a few viewers who would prefer to speak Spanish if that option's available. Yeah. And so it's been real helpful that Adrian is so fluent. It's yeah. his first language, so. Yeah, yeah. so. Oh, really? Any questions, I mean, I'll be glad to just ask for Adrian and I'll be more than happy to help. That's super cool, yeah. That, that's a huge benefit to the community to, yes. to have that option for sure. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask you about the uh, junk silver here too, yes. because looks like you have a lot of junk silver in stock, uh, which is very cool. Let's see, we're at uh, 24X face, which is a great price. Have you noticed uh, more people wanting to buy the junk silver as well? Absolutely, it's been really hard to find elsewhere. Um, and we talked about this before because it's scarce because they're not making anymore. And I think people are catching on to that fact and would like to have some in their stack. Yeah, yeah, well, it's certainly nice to have some. Usually I'll tell people, you know, don't go all in on junk silver. You wanna sort of diversify, have some rounds, some bars, some coins, and some junk silver as well. But if you do need to barter, this is what I would like to use. But when this isn't available, we have been suggesting to people that they get one ounce buffalo rounds. Yeah. It's not as small as increment, say as a quarter and a dime, but you know, at $30 or so an ounce, it still provides an opportunity to buy smaller things in a barter situation and they're available. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I noticed you had a few uh, 100 ounce silver bars, which, uh, these are ridiculously cool. These are actually the best buy we have in silver. For price? At $28 an ounce. Everyone loves them. Most can't afford a bite like this. And for some who really fear that we, we're heading towards barter, this is a, a rather worst large thing. increment to, to have <laughs> to trade with. It would be better just to have uh, gold than these 100 ounce silver bars, I think. Still, they're very cool. Beautiful old pieces. And they're heavy. Yeah. That's a Johnson Matthey. This is an Engelhard, both Canadian companies that either no longer exist and or don't make uh, bullion anymore. Well, I know people collect them as well. Like this particular one, I don't know much about Engelhards, but 
isn't there something to do with like the serial number or, or the design? I've never seen one in a plastic case before either. Yeah, so um, with Englehard, there's actually a site called uh, All Englehard and you can go on there and just look up all the different um, Englehard uh, productions. And um, like you said, you can look up the serial number and um, it'll give you all the information on Englehart. But yeah, that's a better bar. But you're selling it for the same price as this one, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, we like to have some good deals sometimes and have somebody come in here and find something they might love. Yeah, so if I was gonna pick one up, I think I'd probably pick up that one right there. Yeah, yeah, but the, you know, the Johnson <laughs> Matthew, it's a, it's a poured bar, so it's definitely a cool looking bar. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with Englehart myself. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I heard some uh, commotion in the building next door. Yes. I don't know if people heard that on the camera, but you guys are actually expanding, right? Yeah, we're doubling the size of our business here. The showroom will remain the same. However, the, the next door annex is gonna be for our online activities. We've uh, just hired a professional that does whatnot. We have a huge following through Beach City Coins on Instagram. And of course, eBay is always gonna be an option for certain coins. So that's going to be more our online uh, section. This is great news. It is. Harry, I wanted to uh, try something that we haven't done before. I brought in some coins here and I wanted to pretend like I'm going to sell them to you, right? So this would be if someone just walked into your shop, they brought in some silver. These are all silver coins. Okay. Uh, well, one of them's not a coin, but and uh, just to kind of see what your prices would be and sort of how the uh, process would go okay. if someone wanted to get rid of their silver. So sure. here we go. Hey, Harry, I brought some coins in here to sell today. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, let's see what we got. A few different options. Yeah. By the way, can I get you some coffee or anything? Oh, I, I appreciate it. No, I'm, I'm actually great at the yeah. moment. Okay. All right. Thank you so much though. Okay, well, let's start out with the most well-known piece here, and that would be the U.S. Silver Eagle, one at one tray ounce. We're currently buying these at $33 each, which right now puts that at about $8 over spot. Wow, eight bucks over spot. Yeah, that's a tough one to find now. The mint's not keeping up with demand, and as such, we're happy to buy these at but, a nice premium. But with this particular one here, um, the date doesn't matter, the, the condition not necessarily mattering that much. This well, we, is... we want it to be what we call retail ready or retail friendly, you know, not not scratched, you know, just a, a nice average looking coin. If, it, if it's damaged in any way, it, it'll reduce sometimes the price that we'll pay. For instance, okay. let's go to this Morgan dollar. Okay. A couple things with this, it's 1921, it's the most common year of the series and in addition to that, in terms of, we'll call it negatives, there are rim bumps all around it. It's been dropped several times. Yeah. So this is going to be 20 to $22 is what we would pay for something like this. Okay. Um, this is one of the newer styled, what we call buffalo rounds with the Indian head motif and the buffalo on the back based on the old uh, Indian head nickel. Yeah. And we're paying um, $28 each for these now. Continuing on, the Canadian maple, very, very popular here. Again, we would be at $28 for the Canadian maple. Wow, so, well, hold on, Let, let's back up here. So this one here, you were buying at 28, right? Yes. And this one you're buying at 28 as well? At least. Wow, yes, there so, you go. Yes. So the rounds, I mean, that's a really great thing to be stacking. I mean, that cannot be underestimated. Which is why we also recommend this as a really good buy. You know, the same amount of silver as the, the premium pieces for less money so this is a favorite of ours the buffalo round and, and mind you this is a supply and demand kind of thing so right now it's harder to come by these things so yeah it's just what the demand is and you know we're, we're having to pay up to get these things and yeah that's why our showcases are full because we're willing to pay a, a good premium for it yeah that that's better than i've seen pretty much anywhere else like for rounds three dollars over spot that's great yes all right and the last one we haven't talked about this is a kind of a, a tricky is, one. It's an yeah, oddball I threw in there. Yeah. Adrian, this is a, a Spider-Man. This is a, it's a pretty cool production. These are um, licensed products. I think these are, they're going for a pretty good premium, right? They it's, are. It's about a... Um, it's kind of a curveball I wanted to throw yeah. in there. <laughs> I, I personally would probably pay like $40 for that. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. 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 Very hard to find. And for those who collect comic books, it's a nice adjunct to that hobby. Yeah. Well, there you go. So when people are buying the uh, the collectible type stuff, 
Um, sometimes coin shops will pay a little bit more than the rest of the stuff. Uh, obviously, this one is extremely collectible. Yeah. And uh, this was the first in the series. Okay. And so uh, if, if you do a little research on it, you'll see these are actually probably going for like 150, oh maybe, yeah. maybe really? more. Yeah, I figure, so I remember those were like around 40 when they were first out. Right, right, and right. And then they, they probably took off, which is what you're referring to. So that, yeah. that makes sense. And when I see something like this, I would normally look it up. Knowing that these are, you know, $100, $150 coins. I mean, you, you could check eBay comps, but um, would you still pay something around 40 or what would you say no, on something so, like that? Something like that after looking it up. I mean, I like to keep at least like a 12% margin. Okay. Um, you know, somebody brings something like this in. I mean, it, it's going to make sense for us, but we also want to take care of our customer. Yeah. Um, so we want you to come back, you know, essentially. Yeah. And um, we'll do what's right. Yeah. Oh, there you go. The internet's another thing that we use to, you know, comp prices because... Any completed sales, like say eBay, that's a good measure. Mm -hmm. um, so that would give us an idea on that. So that, that's exactly where I would go, like if I'm buying that. And then of course, you know, we're a business, so we, we've got to make at least something on it. Right. But we'll, we'll take care of the customer. So if people have stuff like that and they want to know an approximate value, yeah. they could go look at sold listings on, on eBay and it would be somewhat around that. It's a good guide. That's usually what I tell people too, because it's so hard to know on some of the stuff. There's, you know, been thousands. And, and, and make sure you look at completed listings too, though, uh, because um, anybody can ask for whatever price they want on eBay for an item, but the sold listings, that's that's where the real world happens. From a professional right there, you gotta look at the sold listings. <laughs> yeah. If I may just add to that, the sold listings are excellent. A place to avoid like poison is Etsy. Really? Etsy does not regulate the honesty of people selling coins there and you'll see coins that are literally pocket chains asking five thousand dollars some ridiculous number in the hopes that they snag somebody who doesn't know any better we get calls every week from someone who's got a coin in their pocket that they saw on etsy for thousands of dollars and are very disappointed when we tell them it's just spending money so that's probably one of the worst places to look the worst yeah i mean etsy's good for like crafts and so on as most people would understand but as far as coins i mean it's just like harry said you, you see things for like thousands of dollars and then like you said people would call in and they're disappointed because they think they come across something that's worth a lot of money yeah and we have to be the bearers of bad news yeah that would be uh disappointing i suppose but uh, better to find out uh, sooner than later i guess if you're holding on to a coin and <laughs> you think it's gonna change your life well uh that that's great that you guys are paying so much for the silver rounds um i i had no idea and uh the eagles too eight bucks over that i mean that's amazing it's yeah. crazy that the de demand is that high if you don't pay a, a, a strong premium you're going to be out of inventory yeah. these days that's it. Were you surprised by any of these coins? I mean, you've probably seen this, um, this type uh, this of stuff one, before. This one was a surprise, just like you had hoped. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a lot of people have them. Right. Uh, it was the Marvel series. There was eight of them in the set. And, uh, and yeah, the, the Spider-Man, it was a limited mintage. And people who wanted to collect the whole series needed to get the first one, obviously. And, you know, they would start after the third or fourth or fifth came out. And then they'd go and try and get all the older ones. And so that particular one just blew up. And uh, I was lucky enough to get one at a reasonable price pretty early on. But nowadays, you just can't really find them for a good price. So Well, we got four out of five right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. That was, that was awesome. Super fun to do that because I've, I've never done anything like that before. I've, I've actually never really sold to a coin shop before. So what would be the process? So if I brought these coins in and said I wanted to sell them today, right. What would you just hand me the cash or how would it work? Well, we'd ask your permission to sit down and take a look. We would, you know, literally write up, you know, a written offer to you. Okay. And ask if it's acceptable. Um, we never pressure anyone. We're always glad to look at coins. And if someone wants to think about it, that's perfectly understandable. Sure. Um, we do a lot of appraisals here that result in someone saying, thank you, we'll think about it or it's an estate and we don't have the authority yet to sell. Sometimes a year later, something we've written up comes back. So you've got to be willing to treat people in a kind manner where we'll give you an evaluation, but we're not going to pressure you to sell. And I think people appreciate that. Yeah. So if I said, I do want to sell, like you give me the offer. I'm like, yeah, that seems reasonable. And I want to sell. What do we do from there? Well, then I ask, would you like cash or would you prefer a check? I mean, 
there's really not much to it. It's just up to you. A lot of the time when we talk about going to a local coin shop, people like the idea of walking into a shop with cash, walking out with metal in their pocket. And then on the flip side, you walk in with metal, you walk out with cash. Yes. So it's a transaction that's, uh, you know, you kind of keep it to yourself. And it's, it's great for people to be able to do that. I feel blessed that there's so many coin shops here in this area, but I know some people live in parts of the world where you know, 100 miles to some shop and yeah. maybe their prices aren't even that great. And that's why we have, one of the reasons we've been getting a lot of calls from your channel is there are people that live nowhere near a shop and sometimes they just have a question. Yeah. And we're glad to answer if we can find the time to get back to them. Well, that's really cool that you guys do that. I appreciate you uh, giving me your, your honest opinion on these coins here. I didn't really know uh, what to expect, I guess, because like I said, this is my first time trying to, you know, fake sell something i guess <laughs> but uh, uh yeah maybe we'll have to uh do it with some other coins in the future and bear in mind too you brought basically bullion pieces here with the exception of this silver dollar yeah a lot of times we truly have to sit down and we have a library of books and then there's the internet we've got to do a little research okay when a coin comes in that we just we don't know the answer initially yeah it's like um years ago my my cousin was in law school and I asked him, I said, do you know every law? I was a little kid. He says, I don't know every law, but I know where to look for it. There you go. So I guess what I'm saying is if we don't know the answer, we do know where to look for it. We'll find it. So what you're saying is I should try and stump you with some crazy rare <laughs> coins next time. And, uh, we'll take the challenge. You know, we'll take it. We're always good at you know working with each other and figuring things out. That's cool. I don't, I don't even know if I have anything that crazy <laughs> or rare, but it certainly sounds like a fun video. <laughs> yeah, it would be fun. And if, if you have a little time, you can see us, you know, how we research it. Hey, that was super fun. Uh, really appreciate you indulging me in that, Harry. That was fun. Thank you. And you guys did very well. You guys did very well. Um, I don't know. May maybe it was a little bit too rough for me to throw in the Spider-Man. <laughs> but uh, we'll, I'll try and bring in something a little bit crazier next time and see if we can really... Uh, stump you guys. Okay. Hey, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Silver Dragon. Thanks a lot, Adrian. Thank you.